at the training battalion in Depot Remy on the 3rd of July 1988. To begin, the basic training required of every entrant into the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers.
song, but it's so signature. That's fine. Okay, that's it. Go. Next. Last. Did you get your chord assemblies? Yeah. yeah. Have you got a double decker bus? Yeah. Go. Next. Name. Simon. So when we see you say it. No. Assemblies. Yes. You did. Okay. That's it. Go. Next. Most of the first week was spent on administration details, such as haircuts, injections, the collection of kit, the pressing of kit. So basic training never really started until the first Friday of the first week when we were introduced to the gym. Activities on this evening, sit-ups and dips, followed by vertical jump tests, and then a one and a half mile run. If everyone looks in this way, I will show you the correct way to do a heat. Underarm task. First, we are given a fitness assessment to see what task lies store for the gymnasium staff. This involved carrying out a number of exercises in the gymnasium and then running a mile and a half circuit. There will be someone counting how many you've done, you'll be told how many you've done, you will sprint to the lectern over there, you will give your name, the activity you've just done and how many you did. From there, you will sprint to sit up. Three, 
Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Five. One pound on the bench. Six. Get away. Next man, hurry up. Come on, sprint! Come on, come on, can you come down to the hand? Eight, this Nightingale, last, last hundred meters. You say last man there. Naturally enough, one of the next subjects to take place was drill. Dressing by the right. Of course, I'll go in the ocean, left much to be desired, but this was to improve as time went by. Salute! All the time out, pressing by the left, look up everywhere, one arm's in for foot six inches to the man in front of you.
pace steady. Short arse in the middle. Up, right, stop, right, stop, right, stop. Keep in the open order. Down on these thumbs, force up on the elbows. Bring the arms forward to the level in line with the shoulder and then force it as far to the rear as you lift if possible. Don't close in that rear rank. Rear rank move to the left. Salute to the front. Salute! Another military skill we must learn is weapon training. We start by learning about the various parts of the weapon, how to maintain and clean them, and move on to the safety procedure, and how to fire the weapon from various stances. Later we will fire the weapon on the range. It's perfected, a lot of people prefer this position to that of the kneeling position. It is a quick an easy position to adopt and is used ideally when caught with your trousers down. The sequence of firing, the shot and the marksmanship principles apply exactly the same to that of all the other positions. Just watch them cut or cut. There we see then the basic squatting position and you can see why I said ideally the trousers are down. All right? Notice the soldier has dropped down onto his haunches, trying to get his backside as close into his ankles and as close down to his body weight. All right? And you can see why it causes stress on the knees and on the thigh muscles. Ideally, both feet flat and firm on the ground. Some people have a tendency to raise the, the heel of the feet off the ground which will produce an unstable position and result in you going backwards. 
the rest position then. Notice the weapon, the butt of the weapon in the thigh, and both the elbows situated on the outside of the knee, roughly that area. Any questions? No we'll see what happens then on the command. Ready? Ready! The weapon is brought into the shoulder, again slightly higher than that of normal. The elbows are brought inside the knees, and the knees help to lock the elbows in, similar to that of the sitting position. Good. Fire! Quickly, pick the weapons up, adopt the standing low position. All right, ensuring your safety catches are applied, just lay your weapons down to the right hand side of your body. Lay them down. Remembering then you're going to be slightly oblique or square onto the target with this position. All I want you to do now is drop down on your haunches. Get your feet approximately 12 inches apart, the stood at ease position. And now just squat down to try and get your thighs backside as close to your ankles as you can. Now if you do not get a stable position, I can guarantee that when you squeeze the trigger, you're going to end up on your back. Both feet flat and firm on the ground. You are, as for the sitting position, slightly oblique to the target. Come on, you cannot fire until you get your heels on the ground. Alright, it's a position that takes a lot of practice and a lot of perfecting. Heels yeah. on the ground. Once you've been past, stand up, practice getting down into it. You cannot hold on to the blades of grass, hoping that they will support you, leaving weapons squat, out. Squat. Practice getting up and down into position. Heels on the ground. You must get your heels on the ground. Get your feet further apart. The Meanwhile, some of us are struggling with the physical fitness and are having to do some extra PT in the evenings. Eleven. Thirteen thirty five. Ford, get in line. Don't hold your stomach, that's no excuse whatsoever. You're not even sweaty, look here. Fourteen oh one. You can do that now, Sham. You didn't do it hard enough at the beginning. 14, 10, 14, 11, 14, 12. Come on! Spread! You're the last. A couple. 14, 29. My God. 40. Get your hands off your head. Into the gymnasium, go. Hurry up. Ten seconds. Why are you all not in here? Get in here! Black line over there, go. Hurry up, quickly, move. Come on, hurry up with that. 
What you're going to do is you press forward, I will tell you get on the beam, and you start heaving. You will do a proper heave, your hands will be fully extended. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes. When you've done them, you press down, and I tell you to get down, and you spin around and go to the back of the squad. Is that also clear? Yes, sir. Yes, press forward, press forward. Go. On the beam. Up. We extend. Two heaves. Go. Is it joking? Like you, help him by standing in. Help him. Back on, you've done two. Come on, you've done two. Don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Don't think. I don't want you to think. Don't want me doing it. Standing in, place one hand in the small of the back. There, like so. Do you understand? Okay. Right, get away like it. It's time to get away. Next three, just forward. You all know how to stand in now, yes? Yes? Let's go. On the beat. Up! Up! And down. Up! And down. Place your change. Away you go. Split. Away. Next four on the beat. Up! Each year of our army career we must pass a BFT, basic fitness test, and here in week five you see us practicing for this test. The test is over a three mile course, the first one and a half miles being a run and march as a squad in 15 minutes, and the second half being a one and a half mile run as fast as possible individually and must be done in less than one, 11 and a half minutes. When we take the test properly in week seven, we shall be wearing boots.
Official for you. Official, yeah. Come on, ten twenty two. Come on, next. Ten forty five. Up stubs, get in here, stubs. <laughs> that last one, sir. As the weeks pass, the runs increase both in length and in the weight we carry. Here, two thirds of the way through the course, we are on the four mile run carrying webbing weighing 15 pounds and a rifle weighing 11 pounds. Later in the course, the webbing will weigh 25 pounds and the distance will be increased to six miles. Are you Marcus? Yes, Speak to me, you know what to do? Yes, right, because I'm late, we're going to have to do it a bit quicker. Uh, Down, man. Slow it down, man. get on your video. Slow it down. Slow it down. <laughs> Slow it down. Looking good again. Get up there, Ford! Don't walk, Ford! 
Our first taste of field craft came in week six. We went on a two-day exercise. First, we were briefed on the safety aspects of handling the pyrotechnics used on exercise. Okay, there's nothing around there. So using the blank firing attachment is going to make that safer the rifle. Sure that whenever you are firing blanks, take it, leave it that you have a blank firing attachment fitted. Rule, stand still. It's a light. <laughs> okay. This is the thunder flash. The instructions are on the side. I've seen a lot of people mess about with these things, cut them in half, stick two or three together. They are lethal. That will take your hand off. That will quite easily take your hand off. It says, Thunder Flash Mark 8, directions, hold by this end. It means you can't read the instructions. Tear off white tape to obtain striker and expose igniter. Grab all the white tape. Tear it off. That comes off in your hand. That is called a striker. If you look on the end of the thunder flash, there is the igniter, just like a match head. Okay, if you think of it as a match and a match box, that is the basics of what it is. Okay, it says draw striker sharply but firmly across the igniter head and throw away immediately. What's the safety limit? 50 metres on exercise, 100 metres is really good. And it's mixed around? 100 metres. Ish. <laughs> okay, sometimes these things burn. Make sure you keep your fingers away from it. That's all it is, is a banger. It can be quite effective at night though. Never to be thrown in the direction of troops. It is always to be thrown away from them. I.e. if you are coming this way, the thunder flash is thrown that way. Away from troops. Check the area before you throw it to make sure that there is nobody in, the, in that particular area. Okay, the next thing is smoke grenade comes in numerous colours. We've got orange, blue and green. It also comes in red, which is for danger. Quite simple, the old Rambo kit. What colour should we have? Blue. Smoke, what's it going to be used for? Cover. 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 Going to be used for cover. So what are we going to do with it? Which way is it going to be thrown? Upwind. Up wind. So the wind is coming this way, roughly. Yes? Same detail as before. Check the area. 50 metres hazard. Pull the pin. Ensure that the pin is pulled. Provided you've got your hand on the fly-off fly lever, it's safe. You can never put the pin back in once you've pulled it out. Once you've pulled it out, the only thing you can do is to throw it. Anything up to a minute. In woods, in woods, it's obviously going to hang around a lot longer than what it is in the open. But as you can see, you are now getting an effective screen which you can move behind. But it's still burning strongly. What do you want to pin? Okay, rocket handheld, illuminating para. Good one, strongly. There you go, she's just given out a lot. This is light. It is not instant light. It takes a few seconds from firing it until it actually ignites. To fire it, 
Take the plastic cup off the top. Remove the plastic cup from the bottom. On the bottom there, you can see there is a safety pin. You remove the safety pin, a trigger will drop down. When you fire this, if you ever fire it, you must remember, or you must, I'm just about to tell you, that the bottom of there, there is a whole load of crap comes out of it. And it can do you damage. The top will do you more damage, but what comes out the bottom can hurt you. But when you fire one of these, it is fired from the side of the body, making sure that there is nothing below and definitely nothing above. To fire it, all you simply do is push that trigger around to that angle and then squeeze it. Just push it upright. Ideally, when you, when you fire one of these, you want it to go past the area that you wish to ignite. Past the area you wish to ignite. So that you are silhouetting the troops. I.e. the light is behind them, then them, the enemy, and then yourselves. Okay. Wind, this is on a parachute. Once it gets up to its fullest height, the parachute will open. And it will drift down on the wind. So it can be trial and error until you've fired one a few times, until you get the exact angle of where you want to fire it. If it was fired at an angle of 30 degrees, phosphorus. We all know what phosphorus can do. It's going to burn. You will see it this evening. These things are called mini flares. Mini flares. They've replaced the old very pistol that sailors used to use and we in the army used to use. What you get is a little gun. The body of it there's the trigger, press it and it fires. There is the projectile, it comes in three different colours. Green, white and red. Red is obviously for, for, for danger, safety so we don't bring red out on exercise, apart from for danger. To fire it, as I said, all it is a case of doing is pulling down, making sure it's clear up above, and firing it. It will give you instant light. Burns disappears quite rapidly. Okay, it doesn't last for very long, a matter of seconds, but it is instant light. Best used if you think there is somebody moving around to the front of you, you can put that up and as I say, it's instant light. The light is up there as soon as you hear the bang. Whereas with the shmooly, you will hear the whoosh as it goes up in the air and then it will be a few seconds before the light comes up, which can be yours to your benefit if you hear it. Ideal for defences or for setting up an, of an ambush. Comes with its own idiot's guide. How does everything in the army? Basically, it consists of the following two pickets. One spool containing 60 feet of the trip wire. 60 foot of the trip wire.
squat down. Okay, some of you have just found out that string is dangerous when used with bungees, as you were with ponchos. I know there's no ponchos attached. However, if you use string, make sure you cut it down. The first point I want to clear up. Right, just to the rear of me, there are several ponchos laid on the ground. They're there for simply, to simplify my task today. My task for the next 40 minutes is to show you some ways of erecting ponchos to form shelters for individuals or pairs ready for tonight. And don't think you're going to go with your best buddy because we will pay you off. First one I want to show you is one just over there so congregate around there. Go. A basic poncho that every man should carry. You should also be issued with two bungees. If you haven't got the bungees, use the string, as I've already said. First thing you've got to do is prepare the ground. I have not prepared any of the ground for these ponchos, otherwise it would take too long. But you must scrape it away down to the earth. Get rid of all the lumps out of it, because you don't want waking up in the morning with a bad back or whatever. Get rid of all the fir cones and stones. You can prepare it further by putting down um, bits of fir tree. Right, the soft bits, right, Christmas trees, whatever, get rid of all the spikes, etc. If you've got uh, your mats, lay your mats down. And that will give you some more support or more comfort for your back. Once you've prepared the ground, you can then lay your poncho out, like it is there. First of all, you must tie a piece of string around the neck. There should be a piece of string in it, a draw cord, for when you're wearing it as a poncho. Turn the hood over on itself so that it is, it is watertight. Obviously, you've got to pick yourself two trees wide enough to accommodate your poncho. Your poncho should be no taller than 18 inches. No taller than 18 inches. However, you might think I'm going to contradict myself when I come on to a later one, but I'll point out the reason why later. So with your two bungees, Put your bungees through the two centre holes on your poncho, obviously laying it out lengthways. And you wrap them around a tree. not very good like that, is it? So what you've got to do is to actually adjust it and make sure one end is as far up to a tree as possible. Tim's. However, if you don't possess temp pegs, you can easily make some sort of peg out of the twigs that are laying on the ground. Just whittle them down enough so that they actually fit through the holes on your poncho. Four is quite adequate, but if you want to make six, make six. You just peg it out. Making sure that it's tight. And obviously that's where water is going to collect. All you need to do is put a piece of string around the hood. Pull it up slightly. Building that single man basher. You can in fact turn that into a two man basher by placing another poncho underneath as a ground sheet. But obviously, if it's going to be a two man basher there's only going to be one person in it at a time. That is when the other person is staggering off. Yes? Sure. I'll tell you another thing now. Because you've got two people living out of that basher, you're obviously going to have two sleeping bags. You can either use one as like a mattress, 
and just sleep in the other. Or in extreme cold weather, put one inside the other. But don't think, oh, well, these are smelly yet. Right, I'm not using this sleeping bag. I'm going to swap them over. Doesn't matter. If he gets out to go on stag, you get back in his warm sleeping bag. Further point, bashers should be cammed up. I know it's going to be difficult because of the smooth surface of the basher, but they must be cammed up. Right, put bushes around them or whatever. It's no good just picking up. frying the bacon grill for breakfast. Somebody else can be doing the hot water, the tea or the coffee, whatever you're going to be drinking, or the hot chocolate. Has <coughs> anyone used Arctic rations? No, you didn't get to use Arctic rations. You were using those. No, they're just a lot more things built in, as I said, to get the calories up and more de dehydrated food. And you won't get the tins in case the uh, the old frozen steak and onion casserole will be pretty nasty. And also the dangers are if something with liquid, the liquid freezing and blowing the tin. That's a fruit salad. Alright, Mom. It's alright. Make sure when you drink out of a tin like that you don't cut yourself. It's quite dangerous. Mm. Okay, who's going to help? Oh, you can share them around. <laughs> Steve, you don't need two cups. Right. <laughs> So what are you going to do? You're just going to put your fingers in there. You can get back to the others and see what you're up to, and the ones behind you. Just come around the back. What? Oh, Jesus. It's going to get wet, isn't it? Talk us through it. Oh, very sad. <laughs> yeah, players, Mum, to catch the <laughs> What What trade are you going to be? Your tech, Mum. Oh, right. All, uh, potential uh, Remy Air Techs and Recky Mix. Carry on. Has anybody else got pliers on them? Right. You expect to find your Jeep out here. Fix the Jeep. OK, and you too. Carry on. <laughs> you haven't got a pair of pliers. So Jacket, easy berry, gloves, anything. Everyone cooks sort of at home. You want to fry an egg and look after themselves. Ethan, can you cook? <laughs> <laughs> right, whoever cooks the barry must make sure that uh, Check the sport, right? <laughs> they can do them. Or is it? Yeah. I'll use this one. Uh, right. Well, the sun will finish doing this, the whole thing will be cold again. Two and one beans. Let me get out some diggers and then you can have the beans. Spot the beans out. Then we'll jump at once. Is it like? That's right, yeah. Okay, pass it around and let the others have a try. Oh, right. Not all for you, you'll be getting yourself a short piece. I'll clap my hand. Um, I'll do the hot chocolate. Don't break the bag, try and keep the bag in town. Oh, yeah, I'll put the bag, it shouldn't be one. Powder as well. 
So something you might like curried beans, put a bit of curry powder in it just to spice it up. And a new corporal cop uh, brings out a small bottle of Tabasco, you know, the red peppery sauce. It's very hot, very economical because it's so hot. You just pour a few drops in there. It just things are spicing it up. This is just a film canister. Film canisters, canisters are quite good for bringing things out on exercise. Bits of toothpaste, anything to take large things or cakes of soap. Use a film canister, you can chop things up small and put them in. And if you label them as well, then at least you know what's in them. Put powder is another thing I can put in a film canister. But don't get that muddled up with curry powder. <laughs> This, I recommend, I was after, it was about um, it was on a 14 hour tab over three nights and the hot chocolate was the best thing that happened to me that day. It was a pretty bad day. <laughs> right, I think there's one floater in here. I'll see you, I get it. <laughs> a pine needle. Use a knife. That'll do. Yeah. Whose mug is it? Sure. Right, you get first. First go. <laughs> Don't forget Heli well, you can pass it to him first. Okay. It's quite dungy, so make sure that you stir it well. Yeah. Yeah. That's good, that. Yeah. 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 These things have to be rehydrated, so what you often is best to do before you cook them is actually to soak them for a while. And that will soak <laughs> cooking time. If you soak the peas and the rice, and then keep them in a the packet, just punch a hole, a few holes, and then put the bottom of the mess tin with some water. And then when it comes to cook them, because they've actually rehydrated a bit, it'll take a lot less cooking time. And sometimes you don't have to give them, you're not given very much time to cook. So the more time you can save, the better. Are you squeamish? You don't like it? You don't like it? Oh. Okay, you must make sure if you don't like something, try and find someone you can do sorts with. That's one thing you've got to think of tonight. <laughs> right, have we got any more questions? Press back a bit so you can, everybody can see. Front people squat down. Don't go behind me. Squat down the front people. Okay, can everybody see? Hurry up. Everybody see? Right, different ways then that we can sleep inside the basher. First of all, you've got your carry more mats issued to you. Yeah? The bottom part of the sleeping bag is waterproof and is also the thickest part. One way that you can sleep on it then is just to have the sleeping bag laid out on there inside fully zipped. Fine if it's a large enough sleeping bag for you and you've got enough room. What we got inside? Unzip your sleeping bag. You can see the problems, it restricts your movements inside. And remember what you've got inside there. Down his right hand side is his rifle. Okay, so remember that factor. If you've got a large enough sleeping bag, in this case a long, then you've got enough room to do that. Another way, the carry more mat is designed to keep you warm even when the carry more mat is wet. Okay, so if you lie on the carry more mat, as Webster is there, and then just have your feet in the bottom of the sleeping bag and have the sleeping bag draped over you like a duvet, remembering that the bottom is waterproof, so it's now the top which is going to keep the wet out. And also, it now gives him room, if you show it off so they can see your rifle, for his rifle down the right-hand side there. Okay? A quick exit, right, and a quick getaway. Saves them zipping it. Now, you've all got the liners, yes? The liners designed to keep the inside the sleeping bag dry, uh, clean. Yeah? If you wear to sleep with them, you'll find that you wake up in the morning, you won't be able to move your feet. They twist and lock around your feet. Okay, so they're really a waste of time. Any problems? That is the way I sleep. It's up to you. Try one way tonight and another way tomorrow. Find out which you prefer. Yeah? Any questions? Right, let's move on to the bashers then. First basher here. Right, this is the way that you're going to build your bashers tonight. Okay, and you can get quite comfortably two men in there. 
First of all, you see the bungees. At the bottom, we've got it as low to the ground as you can, but not so low that your wet your feet and your sleeping bag is going to touch the poncho. What's going to happen if anything touches the poncho? It's going to let water through. Okay, so you want it as low as you can at this end, all right, but not low enough so that anything's touching it. At this end, remember, we said no more than knee height. So we've got a slope for the rain. We tie the hood up in the center, and we've raised the center by using these bunches here, so any water runs on will run off. Okay, and then we've cammed it up. Use cam from the surrounding area, cam it up. Any problems? No? If you look inside, then you'll see there's somebody in there, barely asleep, and you'll also see that he's got his kit. All right, you can have a look. You can have a look again in a minute. You're going to have a wander around in a second. At the bottom end, you put your large packs, one either side. At the bottom end, that stops the wind coming in this way. You do require those your webbing, don't you, for a quick exit, quick getaway. That is placed at the top end. Your shell scrape would be directly to the front, just there, and that would be your stand to position in front of the uh, fascia. Okay. So if you had to get away, if you had to stand to, as he comes out that way, he grabs his webbing gets into a shell scrape, gets his webbing on, immediately takes up the fire position. Any problems? Any questions? No? Right, we move down this way then. Goes right then. This one only uses two bunges. Find some nice trees, quick distance apart. And this is a tented version. All right, a tented version. Again, somebody inside. This time he's got his large pack at one end and he's webbing at the other. All right, and he's webbing again at his entrance and exit. Any problems? Again, it's cammed up and we've used tent pegs around the outside to pin it down. You don't have to use tent pegs. You can get bits of wood, bits of stick to push in and hold it down. Anything as long as it stays down, yeah? Again, it's been cammed up and again, the hood's been tightened. Any problems? Any questions? No? An ideal one man. The next day, we took part in a map reading exercise, which put to the test what we had learnt previously in the classroom.
Meanwhile, the other platoon is learning how to move across ground with the least chance of being seen by the enemy. folded away.
taking his time, slowly edging himself forward, remembering the weight of the LMG, a lot heavier than that of the SLR. Still, however, as best he can, keeping it away from the ground. Still keeping himself nice and low, but as quiet as he can. Any questions? Turn around. Moving on then to the patrolling walk. Right, the walk. You've all practiced it, having the weapon in the shoulder, but we haven't actually seen it done. It's and meanwhile, we are getting lost. Yeah, I still can't look at it. Is that the big house down there? Is that Milly Money? Right. Do you know? That's Mickey could have told you, is it? He was going to be a cheek. Oh, no. Need some assistance. Right, we've got to get some bearings from somewhere. This is a little field over there, right? A swamp? No, I'm not looking at the field over there. It's like now you've left a swamp on. I want to get some bearings from that. Go on in. What we're going on now? We're, 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 we're the going hill, on now. water tower. So, let's put them on here. That one and that one. With <laughs> a magazine of 20 rounds, shoot yourself. <laughs> oh, you no one's going to say book a lost, I reckon. Or in general. Team, go on. That's all it meant. Start thinking. You've only been out for a day, for Christ's sake. Right, let's at least get the movement right then. Alpha fire team, give cover and fire. Bravo fire team, prepare to move. Okay. 
Right, closing back to the centre. The reason things are going slightly wrong is not that bad. Because people aren't listening and doing what they're told. A little bit of that there. up lad right fight through come on in your clear fight through Bravo. 
As you are now, as you've got three ranks in the VFT start line shots at the front toss at the rear. Go. Okay, everyone, turn, just turn your heads, face this way. Does anyone get any injuries which you think will stop them from passing this BFT? No, you're all fit enough to pass BFT. Does anyone not know the BFT route? You're all familiar with that. Right? What? I haven't been on the BFT route. Right. You follow him. Right, you're going to do the first part in exactly 15 minutes. And then I'm going to set you off from up there. You're going to do the second part, which is exactly the same route as you've just done. You'll cross the finish line. I will clock you on the electronic stopwatch. You will carry on, and you'll be handed a disc by St. Lawrence. After that, you'll form one straight line outside the doors, and one at a time, you'll make your way into the office, into the corridor there, give your name and your age. Once you've done that, put your disc on the table and form up in three ranks at the other side. Has anyone got any questions? No, no, no. Right, come attention everywhere. By the right, double march, F tight, F tight, F tight.
Just a fish one, sir. Yeah. Is this an official BFT, yeah? No. No. Is this official, man? Yes! Take a disc, man, please. Take a disc, man. You want a disc, man? You want to make... Keep your order, you people. Stand still. Stand still. Stand still. That's it.
running! Each year, the garrison celebrates having the freedom of working town with a parade through the town with bayonets fixed. This year, fortunately enough, our two platoons were able to represent the training battalion and depot. So what better way to bring part one to a conclusion?
Thank you for staying with me. May I have your leave to march past them through the towns and suddenly. Step off, sir. Yeah. Step straight off to your left. Got it. 